morning. Welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Rebecca Baird, and I serve as pastor here at St. James Lutheran Church. Welcome to all of those that are joining us on our live stream this morning. Um, some announcements as uh, we begin our worship. Uh, the first is that on June 1st, there is a ministry fair happening at Warburg College hosted by the Northeastern Iowa Synod. Um, I, I'll be going. It's a part of my call as a rostered minister to go to that and synod events. Um, but it is open to any lay people or any leaders of the church. So if you are interested in attending that with me, um, please let me know. Uh, it is $50, but our, our congregation will cover that. So if you are interested to learn more about what's happening in um, our synod here in Northeastern Iowa, if you want to uh, learn more about our particular ministry, there's some hunger ministries, um, some different uh, worship, and really all kinds of stuff. They have... Um, an overflowing amount of workshops. I actually asked if I could help lead and they said, thank you so much, but we have way more uh, than we actually need. So it should be a really fun um, event and day. Uh, so if you're interested in attending that with me, please let me know. Or if you just wanna ask some questions about it, I, I can help answer those. Um, the confirmation students on our last confirmation of the year, which will be May 1st, are going to put together some kits and things that uh, the Synod is asking for, for area food pantries. Um, there's a sign out on the sign-up table down in the narthex that you can look at. But here's what we need, and I don't really have a number of how many we need. I think let's just make as many as we can. Uh, the first thing we need is we just need some feminine hygiene products, so pads, tampons, um, any size, any brand. Uh, if you are at the store and would be willing to just grab a box or two and bring those to church, that'd be great. And then we also need some cake mix supplies. Uh, area food pantries will receive um, kits for birthdays in case families don't have money to spend on a birthday. Uh, so we will need boxed cake mix, um, frosting and sprinkles. They sell frosting. I think like Duncan Hines or Pillsbury sell some that has sprinkles just on the top. So you can buy that. But sprinkles are also like 50 cents a dollar at Walmart. Um, we also need some cans of soda. Those replace oil and eggs and butter. Um, Sprite is usually the best because it has, you know, Coke mixed with, uh, you know, um, a chocolate might be, might be okay, but Sprite is usually the best kind to buy. Um, and then we will also need some disposable cake pans with lids and candles if you want. So you can just buy a bunch of cake mix, you could buy some cans of soda, you can buy everything. Uh, you don't need to put the kits together, just bring supplies to the church office and confirmation kids will put the kits together. Depending on how many we'll make, we'll bring some to Warburg College to be distributed, but then we'll also take some to um, our food pantry here in Allison. So birthday kits. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. There is more info on the sheet down in the sign-up table. Um, oh, I should say, we need those by May 1st, so that's a Wednesday, and we'll put them together um, that night. Of course, if you want to put kits together on your own, you can bring them to me afterwards. Um, I welcome your prayers this morning for uh, one of our fellow congregations in green, St. Peter uh, Lutheran, is welcoming the Reverend Dr. Jennifer Edinger. She starts today as their interim. And Luther League, we will meet after um, church at 1130 at St. Peter in green. We're going to talk uh, just a, a bit about the trip, but also just uh, Luther League in, in the future. So if you're a part of Luther League and you're a parent of someone in Luther League, Please try and come to that meeting. Uh, we will also meet Pastor Jenny at that meeting, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, speaking of Luther League, Luther League will also host a bunco tournament after worship next week. So stay after, like you usually do for treats, and we will start a bunco tournament uh, right after worship. Has anyone, anyone played bunco in here? No one? I see like two hands. Amazing. Yes, the idlers are shaking their hands. So stay after Luther League. Uh, Billy and Leslie will, will introduce us and show us how to play. Um, it sounds fun and really easy to pick up. So that will be after we should. Amazing. You just roll dice and amazing. That means everyone can play, yes. And kiddos are welcome to that as well while students are a part of a, a Sunday school. Um, 
farmers, if you would, we are going to uh, honor Rogation Sunday on April 28th. That's the last Sunday of this month. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's um, a day where in the church we bless the soil and the seeds and farmers and creation uh, as we um, welcome the spring season and the planting of the fields. So farmers, if you would, uh, I'm asking for you to just bring me a little, like half a sandwich baggie of some soil from your land. If you have some seeds that you want to bring me as well, that'd be great. And we will, we will collectively put them together and bless them during worship. We'll hopefully go outside afterwards and, and gather around a tractor as well to, to bless that and one another. So farmers or anyone uh, that works on um, land and plants things and does stuff like that, please bring me some soil and some seeds, if you will. Um, or if you want, you could even bring, bring a picture of, of your farm. That would work as well. Um, let's see, May 5th, this, I'm just sharing some dates for, for May. Uh, May 5th, we will have our festival worship. It should be a really fun day full of music. And then on May 12th, Sunday school parents, just note that's our last day of Sunday school. We'll have a party uh, after worship for Sunday school kids. We will also be honoring um, Arlene, who is retiring as organist uh, at worship that morning. It is also Mother's Day, so hopefully all of you will be here for that. Um, and then May 5th, Jim, I'm going to invite Jim, our council president, up. He has an announcement um, quick about um, May 5th. After prayerful conversation and consideration, the council is recommending to the congregation the sale of the parsonage. There will be a congregational meeting right after worship on May 5th for the purpose of moving to sell the parsonage of St. James Lutheran Church. This will be the only business discussed at the meeting. If you have any questions, please let me or anyone on the church council know prior to the meeting. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. I know that's a conversation that uh, councils had even before, before I arrived, so uh, if you have any questions, direct them to Jim or, or anyone on council about that. We'll meet after uh, worship on, on May 5th. Um, after worship today, uh, please join us for a Tell Your Story. Uh, Lisa and Lainey Beadle will be sharing all about their life uh, and Lainey's ministry and service that she does for our church and for others. Uh, Lainey also will have some pictures and talk a bit about um, her family and friends. So stick around after worship, come on down to the parish hall, get some treats, and hear from Lisa and Lainey. Um, thank you to all of those that are helping us with our worship today, including our, our acolytes, our greeters. Uh, thank you, Randy and Kathy, for running our uh, tech up there. And thank you to our musicians, Andrew Morton, Katie Eidler, uh, and of course, Robin Morton for leading us in our music this morning. Before we start uh, with our word of the day, I'd love to wave to everyone joining us um, online. Usually we do this at the sharing of the peace, but I thought we would do something this different this morning and say hi to everyone joining us online. So if you would, there's a camera up here. You can just stay seated, and I invite you to wave, and on the count of three, let's say good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Awesome. We'll go to our word of the day. Anyone want to guess how this word is said? This word is pronounced ictus, and I'm going to read a bit about ictus. Um, ictus is from the Greek, ictus, meaning fish. Uh, it's a symbol consisting of two intersecting arcs, and it forms um, a fish. You might also know this by the uh, colloquial term, the Jesus fish. Maybe some of you have seen this, like people have it on the back of their cars. Uh, it's, it, I think it's hidden in our stained glass somewhere. If someone sees it, you get 10 bonus points. Um, it's, it's a really common symbol around churches, and I'll explain why. Um, it was adopted as a secret symbol from early Christians to uh, tell people that they were Christian during a time when it was kind of scary to be a Christian. Um, it's also an acronym for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. So this is just an important symbol. We'll, we'll hear a, a bit about fish in our gospel text today. But if you see this symbol, it's not just a random fish. Uh, it, it has meaning. It has uh, traditional roots 
for Christians today, uh, and it's, it's also a powerful symbol, just like a dove or, or like a cross. So kiddos, we'll talk more about that during the children's sermon today. I invite you to rise as you are able as we begin our worship. We begin in the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue with our confession and forgiveness, which can be found on the screen. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. We'll continue with our gathering hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. It can be found in your Cranberry Hymnal number 377.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'll continue with our Kyrie. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll now hear our readings. first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wander at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. 
In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. And we'll read Psalm 4 responsively by verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Her saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and, what, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy, they were dis- still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And I uh, invite any children that want to come up and, and join me on the steps to please do so. I'm sure Casey and Aaron will come down. Any kiddos that want to come on up? Or big kiddos. Adults are always welcome at the children's message. First John does say we are children of God, so there they are. Amazing. What's up, Casey? Where's your brother? I hear him. I don't see him. There he is. Come here, buddy. Hi. 
Hi! I didn't see ya. You were sprinting down the pews. Good morning. Hey, I have a, a, a cool symbol to show you guys. Do you see up on the PowerPoint up there? Kesey, what is that up there? Do you know what that looks like? It's a fish. Have you had fish before? Have you had fish? Is there a fish up there? I don't think there's a fish up there. There's a lamb and a dove. We're going to talk about symbols today. So you're going to have to tell me, look around, Casey. What symbols do you see in our church? There's some on the stained glass or just little pictures of things. Like what's in this one? Do you see stuff? There's a little manger. What else do you see? There's some pigeons, sure. Those are kind of pigeons. Maybe they're doves. I don't know. I think there's pigeons in the Bible. What else? What's on the next one? Do you see a flower? Aaron, what do you see? Is there, do you see the donkey over there? And some palms? Remember we waved palms? What's up there? Yep, there's some fans up there. Those are pretty cool. There's a cross way up. Do you see the big cross up there? There's all kinds of symbols, but guess what? There was one symbol. So do you, do you know thousands of years ago, Casey, people didn't have churches like this? And they didn't know if someone was a Christian or not. Do you guys know how they told each other that they were Christians? Do you know? Here, I'm going to draw it. Aaron, come here so you can see. Come stand up here so you can see this symbol I'm going to draw. So they would approach someone in the sand. There used to, there didn't, they weren't paved roads like you drive on with mom and dad. There was like dirt roads, right? So they would come up and they, if they saw someone rather than saying, hey, nice to meet you, I'm a Christian, right? Because it was kind of a scary time to be a Christian. They would do this. They would draw this. Are you ready? Watch. They would draw this in the sand. What does that look like? A moon, kind of like a moon. But it doesn't really look like anything, right? So if someone was a Christian, guess what they would draw? They would draw after it. They would connect it. They would draw this. Whoa. And what does that kind of look like? Fish. Casey's so nice. It doesn't really look like a fish. Maybe, maybe we could put a little eyeball there and a smiley face. Now it looks like a fish, right? Or kind of like a big whale. So they would, they would draw that symbol, and that, that's how they would know that they were followers of Jesus. How do we tell people that we're followers of Jesus? You guys know? Well, yeah, we could show them a fish, right? Some people have little fish bumper stickers. How else? Maybe some people in our congregation have, like, tattoos of crosses. Maybe we have little cross necklaces. I wear my little dove. Ooh, you got a county sheriff. Yep, there you go. Cool county sheriff tattoo. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways that we can show people we're Christian. But guess what? The coolest way is, is to be kind and loving. In 1 John, it says, we love because God first loved us. So I want you guys to remember that today, that you can share God's love just by acting loving to other people and know that God loves you so much too. And whenever you see a symbol like a fish or a cross or a dove, know that those are signs that God loves you too. Should we pray? And I'll give you candy and a sticker. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for all of the symbols and words and ways that you show us you love us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a sticker of a little fish. That way you can remember, remember the story you learned today. So here's a fish. There you go. And here's a fish. Do you guys want some candy too? You can, here, maybe you can take that up and mom and dad can put on your shirt for you. Amazing. Good job. That was so cute. I couldn't, I couldn't see him, but I could hear him. So stealthy. Well, good morning, children of God. It's good to see all of you this morning. Um, did anyone watch the, the eclipse on Monday? Anyone step outside? No? Okay, well, a, a couple did. Um, I have a friend that went to Canada for the occasion, and she said that um, seeing totality was just, was just unreal. And this week, I was thinking of some moments in our lives that, that make us ask, is this real? Like, is any of this real? We're just living a, a simulation, right? Or at least I don't think we are. I think we are all real. But I know that I've had moments in my life that just seemed surreal, seemed either too good to be true 
or so bad that I just pray that I'm dreaming and it will all be over soon, right? You can maybe think of some of those moments you've had of your own today. Um, I, th I thought of a moment like when I was younger and my dad was first teaching me how to golf and uh, I was on a little par three by our house and I hit the ball and it went flying down the green and we were walking and we were looking all over for it and we couldn't see it. And we searched the woods, the sand pits, there was some water, we thought it might have went in there. Anyone want to guess where it went? It went right in the hole. My brother shouted, there's a ball in the hole, and it, it was mine. I got a hole in one. Um, I was pretty good, pretty good at golf back in the day. Um, it was unreal. And then I also thought about um, the birth of our boys. It was really unreal to be handed two healthy babies. There's, there's kind of nothing like it. I can't really describe the occasion. And maybe your unreal hasn't even happened yet for you. Maybe it'll be uh, watching your kiddo graduate. Maybe it'll be a wedding. Maybe it'll be vocational, something unreal. And then I was thinking of like harder unreal moments. Uh, when I served as a level one trauma uh, hospital chaplain in Colorado, um, especially during COVID, there were a lot of unreal moments for me. I remember uh, holding hands with people who had experienced the most traumatic of injuries as they took their final breaths, and then holding the hands of their family members as doctors broke the news. This can't be happening. This is unreal. So fill in the blank for your surreal or unreal moment this morning. Experiences of great joy and also great sorrow. Experiences that make us go, is this real? The disciples are experiencing one of those moments today. Panic, sorrow, fear, doubt, perhaps a bit of hope, all colliding into a moment of the disciples sharing a meal together. Now this gospel story takes place right after the story of the road to Emmaus. If you don't know this story, um, essentially Jesus appears to two of the disciples as they're walking, and he's telling them all about how Jesus has fulfilled the scriptures, right? He's trying to give them tangible proof that Jesus has risen from the dead. But it isn't until Jesus breaks bread with them that they finally recognize it's Jesus, and this story that we hear today continues with the disciples pondering still if Jesus really has risen from the dead. The two that walked with him on the road to Emmaus are trying to convince the others, right? And they're, they're pondering if he is actually back in the flesh or if he's a ghost. Now this makes sense because they lived in a culture that would have believed in ghosts and spirits. It's kind of not unlike our culture in some ways. Maybe some of, some of you even believe in ghosts and spirits. So they would have been arguing, is Jesus real or is he a ghost? And to dive into their doubts and questions, Jesus appears to them yet again. And he says something that we heard Jesus say many times in the gospel last week. If you were here last Sunday, you would have heard this. He enters their fears and doubts. He meets them in their unreal moment with a word of peace. And he says, peace be with you. But they still have doubts. So the second thing he does to prove to them that he truly is risen is he shows them his hands and his feet. He shows them feet that walked miles to share the good news and bring justice to the oppressed. He shows them hands that served others, tenderly healed lepers and cleansed demons, hands that broke bread and were pierced for the sake of the world. But that still didn't quite convince them. They still are wondering and disbelieving, so he then says something that seems to come out of left field. He says, do you have any fish? And you might be thinking, how would a fish stick finally convince them that this is real? Surely that can't be the thing. Well, you see, Jesus would have been with his disciples for about three years or so, and he would have had many meals with them. They would have had fish, bread, wine, oils and spices, rice, other food of the culture and time. And it would have been in these meals that they shared the presence of one another, community, conversation, and love. 
So when Jesus asks for fish, he not only is meeting the disciples in this surreal moment, anticipating their needs, bringing them reassurance, but he's also eating a simple task that shows him both his divinity and humanity, something that disciples can't question. The risen Christ in the flesh, God's promises of forgiveness, grace, new and eternal life made real in the eating of fish. So you might be thinking, okay, that's what the disciples had, right? They had the real Christ eating and speaking among them. That was real. But how do we show up and know that Christ is real for us too? Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, Home by Another Way, says this. She says, we can thank God that we have the stories intact. Even though we are outside the circle of this story by thousands of years, Jesus means to include us too. You see, only a precious few saw him in the flesh after his resurrection, but millions more have discovered him in the stories. She says, perhaps that's why we call him both scripture and Jesus, the living word of God. She continues to explain that not only does Christ meet us in word and sacrament, but also in the reality of community and of one another. She asks, have we seen the real Christ in the flesh? No. In the story? Possibly. And in our life together? Absolutely. In all of the moments of our lives that surprise us, the eclipses, the holes in ones, the moments that seem too good to be true, the moments we wish we never had to endure, children of God, today we can be assured that God meets us in it all. Christ really, truly walks alongside us just like he did with the disciples on the road. Christ shares a meal to strengthen us in our church and our community to bring hope to one another, but also to our world. Today, may we be witnesses of this real presence of Christ's love, grace, forgiveness, and new life. And may Christ's presence and love be made real in our own lives and in the world around us through our church, through our community, and surely through our hands and our feet. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, number 522, as we gather at your table. You can remain seated.
I invite you to rise as you are able. Let us now confess our faith in the presence of God and one another by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We'll now turn to a time of prayer. After each prayer petition, I will say, God of grace, and I invite you to respond aloud. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear and doubt, we now pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share holy meals with one another and gather around the table of communion. We pray that we remember that the body and blood of Jesus was given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. We pray today especially for our farmers and all who tend your land. God of grace. God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and justice beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. God, our elder, you care for all of us, your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines, and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. We pray especially for those in our community and congregation who are ill or experiencing struggles with health, including Alice Schwab and others on our prayer list. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and share in beloved community. God of grace. God, our resting place, your son Christ, promise that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died, especially those who we name in our hearts. As we remember and share their love, comfort all of those who mourn. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your love through Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. We will now collect our offering. Thank you for your faithful giving.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. God, form us to be your witnesses in the world through Christ, our true vine. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. I don't know why. Uh, before we head out for the day, uh, just a, another reminder to join us after worship for um, Lisa and Laney's Tell Your Story. Uh, there will be also Sunday school today as well. Um, and then I forgot one other announcement on Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday at 5, we will be having an ecumenical VBS meeting. Uh, so there will be, um, we've had quite a few meetings, uh, and there's some good things on the horizon. We're looking forward to VBS this summer. Uh, if you are at all interested in helping with VBS, even if you don't want to like lead anything or you know be in charge of anything but you just want to be there to help we really 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 need volunteers so please come and tell me uh, after worship if you haven't already uh, told me that you want to help um, and also if you want to help I really would encourage you to come to that meeting uh, again we, we won't necessarily sign you up to be in charge of or do anything but we do need uh, another person to teach uh, one one of the one of the classes so if you are interested in doing that please let me know but anyways I, I encourage you to come to that meeting on Wednesday um, at 5 it'll be here at st. James uh, and now children of God receive a blessing the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit amen we'll continue with our sending hymn Before we go, I'll, uh, I'll see you, uh, Luther League, join us, and parents, join us uh, at 1130 at St. Peter in Green. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
Thanks be to God.